Welcome back to Honest News. Now, brothers and sisters, we're going to be looking at Jeremiah chapter 23, and we're going to be dealing with the uh, going to be dealing with the the pastors and the prophets in Jeremiah's day, and how they're much like today. Uh, and we're going to be sharing with you the difference between the true prophet and the false prophet, the, the, between the true shepherd and the false shepherd, and the true pastor and a false pastor. The false uh, prophet is a false shepherd or a hireling. They're not uh, bringing the word of the Lord. And we, you're going to learn that if it is the word of the Lord that's being given, that the effect of that word is going to cause God's people to turn to God. So anything less than that today that's not turning people to God is not from God, people. It's not a true shepherd, a true pastor. It's not a true prophetic word from God. Are you listening? So let's get into the word, Jeremiah chapter 23, and beginning with verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Now notice, this is a word against the pastors that are destroying and scattering the sheep of his pasture, right? These are God's people. This is God's pasture, right? So those pastors that are scattering the sheep, not gathering the sheep, but scattering the sheep, they are not true pastors. In fact, God never called them into the ministry. He never gave them his word. Are you listening? It's much like a wolf, right? Coming in, scattering the sheep. How many know the true shepherd does not scatter the sheep? The sheep are not scared, afraid, terrified, nervous when the true shepherd is present. But they are when a wolf is present. Amen? Or when a lion is present, some kind of a predator. Amen? Let's go to the next verse. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. These are the very pastors that are feeding his people. But what are they doing? You have scattered my flock. Look what they're doing, folks. Look what the false pastors are doing. Look what the false ministers, the false prophets are doing here. And driven them away. They're scattering the sheep and driving them away. These are pastors that don't care about the sheep. They don't care about the people. Amen? And they drive the sheep away. They're not the kind of a shepherd or kind of pastor that the people want to be around. They'll come and listen to the word, but they're terrified of him. They're afraid of the pastor. They're afraid of these pastors that scatter the flock. Amen. And Jesus said, the voice of a stranger you will not listen to, you'll flee from. Well, why do they flee the voice of a stranger? Because they drive them away. They're scared. They're terrified of these false shepherds. I'm concerned. I'm deeply concerned with people today that are listening to false prophets that are listening to these pastors that are only there for a wage. 
They don't care about the people's soul. They don't care about feeding the people's soul so that they might be strong in the Lord and that they might be drawn closer to God. And that's not their concern. That is not their concern. And notice here, it says, you have not visited them. When's the last time you, your pastor visited you? If you're part of one of these large mega churches, you'll, your pastor will never be over to visit you. He'll never come out to your home. Much less as if, even if you're sick. If you were sick and in bed, they wouldn't come visit you. They would send someone in their place. Maybe. So they drive the people away. They scatter the people. And the scripture says they don't visit them. These are the the characteristics or the markings of a false pastor or a false prophet, a false shepherd. Let's go to the next verse. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries whither I have driven them. God says, I have driven them. And will bring them again to their folds. And they shall be fruitful and increase. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? One minute we see that the false prophets, these pastors are driving the people away. But then we see God saying, whither I have driven them. Well, thank God. Thank God when a person is under the, a ministry that's not of God and the people have enough sense to be driven away. And leave that ministry. Leave that pastor that's not a, a shepherd of God. That's a good thing. Amen? When people are too scared to stay in a certain congregation because they're afraid of their pastor. At least they're not under that pastor anymore. Amen? So let's go to <clears throat> Jeremiah. 23 and 18. Now you do well to go back and read these verses yourself. I'd, I'd read this whole chapter if I were you and get a real understanding. But this whole chapter, God is dealing with false prophets, with pastors that are not shepherds. They don't care about God's people. They don't have a relationship with God. And the scripture says they don't stand in God's counsel. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? See, these false ministers, these false pastors, they don't stand in God's counsel. They don't wait for God's word to feed the people. Amen? What do they do? If you read in this chapter, you'll find that they prophesy to their own hearts, their own imaginations. Amen. They prophesy their dreams. That's right. But it doesn't come from God. God said, I didn't send those dreams to you. I didn't send those words to you. I mean, you know, the devil can give dreams too. The devil can give visions. Amen. And there's a lot of ministers out there right now that are receiving prophetic words from the devil. Receiving visions and dreams that are not from God. Amen. So let's go to the next verse in our study this evening. Jeremiah 23, verse 22. But if they had stood in my counsel, and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from their evil of their doings. 
You hear what God is saying? The shepherd doesn't just come to sugarcoat everything. Amen. The shepherd, the good shepherd, uh, 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 or an under shepherd, uh, a true minister of the gospel, a true pastor, he's not just going to give you words that are easy to receive all the time. It's not always going to be smooth. Sometimes they're hard words that the man of God has to give. Sometimes he has to give a word of correction. Notice what it says here. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned from their evil way and from their evil of their doing. That's right. God's word brings correction. And I will guarantee you most of these, especially these mega churches out there, they don't want to be corrected. And there's people right in the house of God today, God's people that don't want to be corrected. Amen. But how many know that's part of the diet? That's part of feeding the sheep. Sometimes Brother Joseph has to give you something, feed you something to correct you. How many know that's all in the will of God? All scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, in righteousness. Amen? Hallelujah. Jeremiah 23, verse 28. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is God saying here? He says, if a minister truly has my word, it's not always easy to give. Sometimes it's difficult for the man of God to give a word to the people. Sometimes the man of God struggles with a word. Amen? But God says if you will deliver that word faithfully, amen. Folks, I'm going to tell you this. Times I have to share a, a word with you all, and it's not easy sometimes. But who am I to be faithful to? You? Am I supposed to be making you happy? Am I supposed to be pleasing you? No. I'm supposed to be faithful to God. To deliver the word that he's given me to deliver. That's what a true shepherd does. That's what a true pastor does. Amen. That's what a true servant of God does. He gives the word that God tells him to give. Not what he wants to give. You know, there's a lot of ministers in this hour afraid of driving the people away, not because the people, they care about them, but because payday. Right? Because if they offend the people and they no longer want to go there anymore to church, then they're not going to get that money. And so they're afraid of offending the people. Are you listening to me? If you're more concerned, I don't know if I've got ministers out there listening, if I've got pastors listening to this broadcast or not, but if you're more concerned about offending the people because you're afraid they may leave, then you're concerned about not being faithful to God. You're in trouble. You're not delivering that word faithfully. Now notice what the effect of that word is. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? What is the chaff to the wheat? How many know the chaff is to be separated from the wheat? It doesn't stop there, though. Look what God says about it, what he's going to do to the chaff. He says, is not my word like a fire? saith the Lord. The fire burns up the chaff. 
The chaff is like the carnal nature, the flesh, the the things that are against God, the things that are the stubbornness, the rebellion. Amen? And God's word is like a fire. And it will burn up the chaff. Amen? And leave behind the golden grain. Amen. How many know God's word will separate? God's word separates. Amen. The wind of the Holy Ghost separates. And the fire of God's word burns up the chaff. Praise God. Listen to this. God's word is like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. I'm glad that God is gentle. How many have ever experienced God's word like a hammer breaking that stony heart? Have you ever experienced that? Where the word of God so gently like a hammer pulverizing that carnal nature, that hard heart, to where tears begin running down your face. Amen? God's word is like a fire. God's word is like a hammer. It breaketh the rock in pieces. I believe in this hour that is needed. I believe the true pastor, the true minister in this hour needs to have a word from God like a fire and like a hammer to break that stony heart into pieces. Amen. Such a need. God's word is not tickling ears. Amen. God's word is not tickling ears. God's word is not speaking smooth words, enticing words. Is God's word not like a fire? Is God's word not like a hammer, brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. Nothing can break that stony heart like God's word. Nothing can burn up the chaff like God's word, brothers and sisters. And that faithful minister that faithful prophet that brings the word of God, the effect of God's word will be burning up the chaff, separating the chaff from the wheat, and his word will be like a hammer. Praise God. Glory to God. So God says, Therefore, behold, I'm against the prophets saith the Lord I'm against the prophets that steal my words every one from his neighbor you know there's a lot of ministers out there that will hear a sermon from another pastor or another minister they'll find it on the internet and they'll go and try to preach it and sometimes they'll not even ask the minister if they can use that word Amen? It says they steal. They steal the words from one another. It's true, people. There's pastors out there that they only preach the same sermons over and over and over. They don't get a word from God. It's sad. I, it is so sad when I see a minister and when he's praying, and he doesn't even pray from his heart. He's got a piece of paper in front of him. Yeah, that, that's what's being considered a minister in the United States. You pray over the president, you got a piece of paper in your hands, and you, pr and you pray from a piece of paper because you don't want to say the wrong thing. How is that being real? Praying from a piece of paper? words you've written down on a piece of paper
But brothers and sisters, it should be from the heart. The true man of God, the true minister, the true pastor is going to bring the people a word from God. And he's going to deliver it faithfully. Amen? Glory to God. And if you're interested in the flesh, you're interested in feeding the flesh, if you're interested in entertainment, you're not going to want to sit under the ministry of a true man of God that's delivering God's word that's like a fire and like a hammer. How many of you out there appreciate Brother Joseph? Do you appreciate this ministry? That this ministry, God's word is like a fire, it's like a hammer? Sometimes that fire, that hammer is needed, isn't it? Do you appreciate that? Do you appreciate God chipping away at that old nature in your life? Removing that fallen nature so that his image can come forth? Hallelujah. And last but not least, Jeremiah 23, verse, I guess I've got that on there twice. Wait one moment. Hallelujah. Here it is. Jeremiah 23, verse 32, Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies, by their lightness, yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. So what's the effect of the false prophet? What's the effect of these false ministries today? The, the people are not going to benefit. The people are not going to be profiting. They're not going to gain. Amen? And then we see the latest see in church saying, we're rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And God says, you're poor. You're blind. You're miserable. You're naked. Because those ministers today are telling the people they're rich because they're looking at the physical riches. But they don't care about the soul of the people. And they get the people not to care about their own soul. Are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? James made it very, very, very clear that he wished above all things that you and I would prosper even as our soul prospers. First, our soul should prosper. Amen? So I think I've laid out for you pretty, pretty well here. I think I've given you a clear understanding from God's word the difference between the true prophet, the false prophet, the true pastor, the false pastor. The true pastor is also a prophet. He brings God's word in season. And that word is not always easy to be received. It's not always for the, easy for the man of God to deliver. But nonetheless, he is faithful to deliver the word of the Lord. And the effect of his word that he gives is it turns the people away from their evil ways, turns them from their evil doings and back to God. So it brings repentance. Amen? Are you listening to a true minister today? Are you listening to a true pastor? The local church you go to, does the man of God deliver the word of God faithfully? Even if it's a word you don't want to hear? Do you, do you thank God for that word? Maybe not right then when you're receiving it as, as it's scathing, but afterwards... It yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them that are exercised thereby. Amen. No chastening seemeth to be joyous at the present. Brothers and sisters, sometimes the man of God has got to chasten. Sometimes the man of God has got to uh, be used by God in that, in that way. How many know Paul said, Would you rather I come with a rod? Or would you rather I come in love? Amen. No man of God, no minister tr 
desires to come to God's people with a rod of correction. And I don't enjoy it. Amen. But there is a need. If there's need for correction, then the faithful minister is going to bring that correction. Amen. Years ago, fasting, the Lord gave this word to me. He said, I'm going to use you to get my people to go in the right direction, to turn them around. They're going in the wrong direction. That's what the Lord said to me. He said, my people are going in the wrong direction. I'm going to use you to turn them around. Amen. Praise God. I'm asking you to pray for Brother Joseph. Pray for me that I will remain faithful and true to, to God, true to his word. Don't be concerned about whether the people are going to want to hear it or not, but just to be faithful to God. Be faithful to, del to deliver, thus saith the Lord. Amen? God bless you.